So, welcome back and today it's all about the crease feature in Blender. What it is and why it's useful and how you can use it. And why you should use it, not always, just sometimes, where it makes sense. Okay. First of all, it requires a little bit more memory, but it reduces the complexity of the mesh quite a bit. If you know how to use it, of course. So, where to find this feature? It's just one number in Blender and it's there forever basically, but now with the Adaptive Subdivision it's yeah, useful. Before the Adaptive Subdivision it wasn't useful at all. Okay, you need a mesh, in this case a cube. Go into edit mode and you have to select a face or an edge, right? With just a vertex, a vertex is not enough. Then you open up the properties panel select this face here and under transform mean crease that's where the magic happens okay and as you can see here if you change that it gets what is it red and if you disable it basically zero is disabled then there's nothing right and like point 10 is like this color here dark red okay so and what is it useful for with the crease uh, feature you can define edges that are sharp um, in, con yeah, in combination with the Catmull Clark of course with, with simple subdivision it doesn't make sense this is sh sh it's already sharp but Catmull Clark if you know Catmull Clark it smooths everything out so let's render this cube here with Catmull Clark and it should be a sphere and boom it is a nice looking sphere as you can see it's everything is smooth but we don't want a sphere we want a tube Right, we want a tube out of this cube, and what would you do? Go into edit mode, add a few edges, and push them very close to this edge here, like this. And okay, let's render again. Yeah, that looks like a tube, but this is too smooth, we want it sharper. What would you do? Right, you will add Two more edges, scale it a little up. Oh, what was that? So, and then you have to guess, right? And if it's not sharp enough, you have to scale it up again and so on. So let's render this one. And, but this looks good, right? It has nothing wrong with this method. As I said, it uh, saves a little bit of memory sometimes with the adaptive subdivision. But as you can see, a cube has six faces or quads you can see the faces and now we are at 22 so four times as many and there's a different way so let's undo this stuff here okay and let's render it again to check it and it's a sphere again and we're going to use the creasing feature and a zero is disabled everything is smooth and one is 100 percent sharp um, i wouldn't recommend this one here one I mean, 70, maybe 8.8 .8 is enough. That is really smooth, uh, really sharp, I mean. And everything lower here, like 0.1 is really smooth, right? Zero is 100% smooth and so on. So let's crease this one with a value of 0.6. And of course the bottom, we want a cube with also 0.6. And let's render this. And now you see we got a uh, tube out of a cube with a nice sharp edge here but it's not 100 sharp it's still rounded but let's say this is this is too sharp okay select these faces here and go to 0.4 render again and now it's not as sharp as before yeah and you could lower it 0.10 whatever okay but that looks ugly Okay, let's put it back to 0.6, looked good. Let's check it, yeah. And yeah, you don't have to specify one crease value for every edge. You can have multiple yeah, crease values. Let's say we want this one here, these edges sharp, but these here not sharp. So we want to put it at the wall like this. So, so let's select this one and give it not 0.6, we want it a little smoother, like 0.4, and render it again. Now, okay, this is, no, this is too much. 
Let's go to point two. And yeah, now we got a little bit of smoothness here. And we could put it at the wall and still a nice rounded shape in front, right? That fits at the wall and this is still round. Okay. And as, as I said, you can change that, that to be smoother. And let's render this. And yeah, and to model this shape here, that requires quite a lot of polygons. Yeah, and it's not as easy to change as with the crease feature. Okay, for, for simple shapes it makes sense. And let me demonstrate it to you. That's a tricycle. And as you can see, very low poly. Yeah, I mean, this one has just, what is it, 68 quads. Right, and this one here, nine quads. And this geometry looks a little ugly, but it works. And this here is, yeah, let's start with this one. It has only 14 quads, 14 quads. And if you enable, uh, here's also a non-creased version. Let's start with this one. As you can see, it's the same, but without the crease. And let's render that one. And yeah, that looks like a blob of something, but not like wood or plastic or so. Not good at all. Look at the rest here. You know, everything is smoothed out, which is okay, but we don't want it in this case. And let's take a look at the creased version. As you can see here, there are different crease values. This one here is 0.5, and you can select it, by the way. Hit Shift G, crease, and it will select the same Increased value 0.5 in this case, and this here is 0.25. Select this one, Shift G, and everything was 0.25 selected, and this here is 0.1. Okay, and let's render it. And boom, that looks more like a piece of wood or plastic, right? On the bottom, it's sharp, really sharp, and it's still very smooth and round. But it's not all, also the edges are very round, right, rounded, which is quite nice. Yeah, look at this simple geometry. And let's take a look at it in shaded view and look at the result. Boom. Not bad, but there's more like this one here. Let's separate this one here. If we, no, we can't separate this. We have to, so this is the non-creased uh, version, All right? Everything is, is smoothed, smoothed. Yeah, everything is smooth and so on. Looks like a blob, but if we render it like this, with crease, different crease values, this one here is 0.5, and 0.5, 0.6, and so on, 0.3. Let's render it, and boom. You can see it looks basically it looks basically perfect. Yeah, and to model this, uh, it requires quite a lot of polygons again, and it just has 68. And if you're not happy with that, just select it, Shift G, increase, and you want it a sharper, increase it to 0.5, and boom. Now it's really sharp. Okay, and if you want it rounder. 0.1, now it's rounder. Okay, that's what, okay, one more example here. This here, there's also an n or multiple n like this here, 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 and here. And as you can see, all by, also very simple geometry, but a little more complex because yeah, it, it requires this amount of edges to get the yeah, basic shape. But as you can see, it's very simple. And we render again first the non-creased version. And it looks okay-ish, but like a blob, right? No, nothing is sharp, everything is rounded, too, too rounded, right? So let's go to the sharp version, render this one, and boom, this is still round, but these features here are sharp. Yeah. Same is true for the wheels here. As you can
can see it's nice and sharp, but it's not 100% sharp. There's a little bit of roundness here. And if you look at the geometry, it's a very simple geometry, right? I mean, it's the simplest geometry. It, it can't get simpler. <laughs> mm, okay, yeah. So that um, I, I will um, link these files in the description. There's a second file with displacement, crease and displacement. Let's open this one. And it's again a super simple, um, okay, there's also a volume around it. Let's get rid of this one. It's a super simple file. As you can see here, these are just a few boxes, basically. I mean, it's as, as, as simple as it gets, I think. And as you can see, there's a multiple creases on it, different values. This one is 0.4 and this one is 0.9. So it's really sharp, but not 100% sharp. There's still a little bit of roundness. Okay, and there's a displacement shader. I, I don't want to talk about this displacement shader, but you can check it out. Mm, and yeah, let's render this one to take a, to take a look. Okay. This file is a little slow. So, and as you can see, I mean, it looks good. Yeah, everything, the silhouette is broken. And by the way, the Pre preview rate is four, so it's a little quicker. Let's let's change it to one. Let's check this. Okay, it takes a little longer, but it's okay. Uh, as you can see, it breaks and the silhouette is broken. Nothing is straight, right? Actually, I have a picture here. You can take a look at the picture. Here's the geometry, the simple one, and that's the rendered result with that geometry and displacement. Yeah. First of all, it applies the crease, and then on top of that, the displacement. That's why it works like that. Okay, let's get rid of the displacement and render again. Oops. Takes a second. That's how it looks like without the displacement. It's just a little bit of roundness, just a little bit. And yet, uh, yet uh, let's get rid of the crease values of all the crease values so nothing is creased and let's render again without displacement as you can see it looks like a blob right yeah maybe you want something like that but <laughs> that looks weird okay yeah as you can combine it with displacement you can use it without displacement to keep the geometry very simple and still get a very nice result smooth and sharp meshes, of course only with catmull clock, with simple it doesn't make sense. And you should use a dicing rate of one to get the correct result. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, till the next video.